Roll it, bro. Prataloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1281, March 22nd, 2024. <laughs> 71 degrees on this day in 1945. 14 below on this day in 1888. And on this day... March 22nd? 1952, 14 inches of snow. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Mark from Chippewa Falls has done the Lord's work. The podcast count was correct through last Friday, March 15th at 1266. Then the mayor started this week at 1277. I missed 10 years, didn't I? I mean, 10 shows. 12, uh, uh, Monday was 1267, Tuesday was 1268, Wednesday was 1269, yesterday was 1270, and today is 1271, not 1281. All right, I'm going to put down 1271. Thank you, sir. Uh, You're from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Appreciate was Chippewa that. Falls where uh, Diane Keaton had to go home in uh, in Annie Hall? Did they live in Chippewa <sighs> Falls? What's that? I, I, was, recall, I love boy, Annie Hall, but I can't recall that. And, uh, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Walken, uh, Christopher Walken was her brother. Yeah. He was completely <laughs> nuts. I think and they had the dinner table. Uh, and the were, lobster? Yeah, it was one of the scenes. Where he threw the butt, or the, something was under the but kitchen. But I'm talking about Chippewa Falls. I think it was Chippewa it, Falls. It is Chippewa Falls. I just looked Thank it up. Thank you very much. Is Mark yes. Garofalo with us? Oh, well, Pat. I mean, I don't think Pat, Mark was available Well, that's today. his brother, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Pat Garofalo, <laughs> state representative, how are you? Oh, I'm just peachy, sir. How about you? <laughs> uh, two things. You, uh, you, not- you notified the show about the poor math ability of the Minneapolis City Council is it refers to their uh, ordinances they keep trying to create for ride share. You want to uh, illuminate that for us? Well, I just, you know, as I think as everyone knows now, Uber and Lyft are slated to shut down uh, May 1st. Right. And it's because of this silly city council ordinance that they, they enacted. And the specifics of this are that they're mandating that an Uber driver would get a dollar forty for um, for every mile they drive and fifty one cents for every minute they drive. So you kind of do the math on that. If they do four fares for fifteen minutes each, you know, ten miles each. I mean, just kind of like just do the math. It yep. doesn't work out. It destroys demand. Not only that, if it didn't destroy demand. Hell, I'd quit my job and I just go start driving Uber for that <laughs> no, sort of no. money. It's about fifty bucks, isn't it? I mean, it's it's way more than that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane, and like and we're not. Again, I understand like reasonable people can debate the proper role of government and whatever, but are, is it so bad that the DFL is this bad at math? Yeah, is it really? Is it reached the level that they simply deny basic mathematics? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, well, there's our answer. There we go. All right, why did they get into it in the first place? It's not well, their job to set salaries for private employees. Well, independent contractors. Yeah. Too. That's yeah. the crazy thing about it. So, you you know, astute listeners of your program will remember that when I was on the show in May yeah. and we talked about this issue, I started laughing, saying that there's no way walls – because remember, the legislature, the DFL legislature – passed a law to essentially do the same thing. There were some differences, but it was to make the program uneconomical. And I said, there's no way this can become law. Walls has to veto it, right. which, he, which he did, right? right? Because there was no other alternative. It was just going to be a complete disaster. Right. Well, now the Minneapolis City Council, I can only assume after a fresh night of drinking, decided <laughs> that they wanted to, to do this, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it is just... It is it is bonkers. It is beyond like 
it, as dumb, as foolish as mistakes are that we see happening in the state of Minnesota with our public policy, this truly defies description. I mean, you could sit down with a fourth grader and they could understand why this is a bad idea, but <laughs> the DSL can't think of that. It's well, just brutal. I, another thing that intrigues me, uh, from your perch in the House of Representatives, is this state starting to get a bad rap nationally? Um, well, it's <laughs> it's not as good as it used to be, right? I mean, this is this is brand damage, right? Like, so so people who who don't live in Minnesota who aren't here all the time, you know, what are the first things they think about when it comes to Minnesota? You know, it used to be like uh, Prince and Kirby Puckett or and fish. Nice, or the mall. fishing or nice yeah, right. nice parks, clean yeah. air, quality yeah. of life. Now it's riots, lunacy, and a failure to understand math. Right. I mean, there's, I mean, like when you have national publications writing editorials mocking your state for taking what is an essential service out, knocking it offline. Right. It makes no sense. I mean, does anyone, does any one of your listeners think it's a good idea to go back to the way we had with taxi cabs? No. Where they had inefficient, expensive service delivery Right. Right. No one wants to go backwards. Yet that's exactly what we're seeing from the DFL. And there's inability to understand basic math. It is. And your listeners know, know this. Can you tell, by the way, that Chris put a quarter in me before? Uh, yeah. Got what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but like like there are record numbers of insane people in both political parties. Mm -hmm. This is why you need divided government at the federal level. And at the state of Minnesota, you cannot have one party in total control or else you get a roadside car fire like this. This is what we're having. You, uh, you have intimated, I believe uh, to Reavers. Uh, I don't know why he would not have been able to handle that, but you, you intimated to Reavers that, uh, uh, walls is triangulating. What, is, what do you mean by that? Well, what has happened now, and you see this on a host of issues, is um, the DFL has reached the breaking point. They have continued tacting farther and farther left, mm -hmm. more and more crazy. So remember uh, last year they increased the budget to $70 billion, 36.5% mm -hmm. increase. Now we're shocked that next year's budget is going to be upside down. Shocked. Totally shocked that mm -hmm. you, you can't maintain that. So he's saying, hey, we can't spend any more money right now. Mm -hmm. So he is shit, he's moving himself away from the progressive base, the left-wing base. Mm -hmm. Then on Uber, he's pushing himself away from the left-wing base saying, hey, you know, we, we've got to fix this. Now, of course, his primary objective is if this blows up on May 1st, he doesn't want his fingerprints by it. Right. So he's pushing himself away from that. And then finally, you see with this, you know, um, Mary Moriarty in Hennepin County, mm -hmm. um, you know, completely irresponsibly charging the state trooper for his appropriate use of deadly force. That's right. You see him now distancing himself away from that because he can take that case away from her and send it to the attorney general. Right. And so you see on these issues that even the DFL has gotten too crazy even for Tim Walls. That's so. right. <laughs> And that's and that's where things are going. And, and I'd, I'd love to have some good news at the end and say, hey, you know, they've seen the error of their ways and it's an election year. So they're going to be pragmatic. Nope. Nope. That's not that's not where we are. No. So. <laughs> it's always fun to talk to you. And, yeah, I can't uh, thank you enough for all the great news. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on in one of these days. We'll we'll make that happen. Absolutely. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Pat Garofalo. Uh, I did put a quarter in him a little bit. When I said you can't handle it, I was being facetious. No, I know. I yeah. was giving you some grief. I know, I know. But uh, he mentioned Mary Moriarty. Did you see now where our state lawmakers in Congress, mm. in a bipartisan way, are calling for her to uh, take her mitts off the Londrigan mm. case? Mm. Yeah. And we get a, a pretty good quote here from... Uh, Who's the quote from? Pete Stauber. Uh, Republican U.S. Representatives Tom Emmer, Michelle Fishbach, Pete Stauber, and Brad Finstad sent a letter to Walls Wednesday demanding the case be removed from Moriarty's office. They also said they asked the House 
Judiciary Committee to investigate the matter. Quote, Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty has weaponized her position against law enforcement, they said. She ignored an independent use of force expert chosen by her own office who stated that Trooper Londergren acted as a reasonable officer would have. And I think it's gotten to the point where what is the what is the uh, point of her even being in that office? Because if it comes to law enforcement to maintain a civil society, you're going to have to take every case away from her. She has weapon that but she's told us that. Not in well, so many words, but she said this is where I'm coming from and and here she comes and she's charging this state trooper who did his job. Mm-hmm. And now they want the case taken from her. And I, I, it, it will be. It has to be. She can't continue this nonsense. We're, again, we're, we're back to yesterday's question. And Kenny's answer is both. Is she part of an organized effort in this country to destroy the culture of law and order? Or is she driven by a deep, possibly planted as a child, ideology? Or oh. I came up with a third one overnight. Yeah. Is she simply trying to prevent another riot? Uh, I, I do mm. not think that's what she's up to. I don't give her any credit for altruism. I don't, All right. I don't see that in her makeup. I, All I, right. I don't see that. The, the people that are requesting that this be put in um, Ellison's lap, though, do they realize that then Ellison is going to be both prosecuting and defending the trooper? And he can't because that's a conflict of interest. Right. Because the state troopers are under his heading. Uh, it, it's just a mess. It should, it should go away today. It should just... Moriarty should pick up the phone, call the defense, and say, you know what, never mind, never mind. It's over. There's going to be nothing. Well, okay, but but if she does that, and maybe he does she anyway. She won't do that. I know she won't, but if she does that, what type of lawsuit are we talking about then? I don't necessarily know there would be a lawsuit. Uh, uh, For defamation? You don't think so? Well, I, I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't. I, I don't care about that. That's not what's in play here. What's in play here is this preposterous charging of him for doing his job. If you want to worry about the lawsuit, let's wait till that happens. Okay. I can only take things one step at a time. Okay. When are you leaving? Are you leaving today? Boy, am I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How is everybody? Great. You're right. The only answer here is the, the cleanest thing that could possibly be done is her dropping just it. Just drop it. Just drop it. Mary, you're wrong. Do you have the ability to say that to the public? You're you're just you blew it. Because taking it out of her hands is it's still gonna be messy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Moriarty initially said the expert's opinion would be crucial in deciding whether to charge the trooper. But she stopped working with the expert and later charged Londigren with second-degree murder, manslaughter, and first-degree assault. Mary, you blew it. You got a you got a young state trooper going by the book, and you want to throw that book at him. Not that book. You want to throw your book at him. It's a pathetic. The state is pathetic. I like what Garofalo said. We probably did in Minnesota have a brand. Mm-hmm. You know, a pretty good brand. I mean, going back to when Wendy Anderson held up the stringer of walleye <laughs> on the cover of Time magazine, and I think the headline was, The State That Works. <laughs> My God, it's not even recognizable now compared to that. The left is nuts. They're nuts. Um, did you see who's backing Mary with all her might? Ilhan Bleeping Omar, <laughs> who said, if you're not in Hennepin County, stay out of it. Yeah. Well, Ilhan Omar, <laughs> well, biggest mistake that 5th District ever made. Wh- wh- Ilhan, question for you. When is the last time you did something for Hennepin That's County? Great, no, <laughs> hell, just the 5th District. Yeah. Just well, that, give I it, suppose that is all of Hennepin even County. Even Cedar Riverside, just, a, just an intersection. <laughs> when did you do something for that intersection? Yeah. <laughs> It's just, uh, I'm glad to hear uh, people that might be considered more reasonable than us 
uh, point out that uh, our brand has really taken a beating. Whether it's uh, the Mall of America, Prince, the Twins, fishing, winter wonderland, land of 10,000 lakes. You betcha, and casseroles. That's right. Hot yeah. dish. Hot yeah. dish. Hot dish with those yeah. crushed yeah. up potato uh, chips. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good old Minneapolis responsible for half the country burning down in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Yay us. What a brand hit. And now let's turn to... Uh, is this Center of the American Experiment? I believe it is. Do you know how many people are leaving town? Yeah. Uh, Been there, done that. Well, I... Uh, I mean, leaving town, like going on vacation or like leaving. There's a little more than three years between the date of the last census, April 1st, 2020, and July 1, 2023. Hennepin County lost a net 23,000 residents, even as the state overall posted a modest gain. So net domestic out-migration from Hennepin County was over 50,000 people, equivalent to a good-sized suburb, which was partly balanced by international migration from Somalia and other countries of 11,000 people. And that out-migration will only increase with a pro-crime county attorney in charge of law enforcement. As Bill points out, I believe that would be Bill Glom. Ramsey County, home of St. Paul, is doing even worse as a percentage of its population. Uh, The larger blue counties of L.A., Cook County, Chicago, and New York City boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens lost even more. Of the 10 counties in America with the largest domestic inflows, nine were in red states, Florida, South Carolina, and Texas. So the great sorting is dramatically reshaping life in America. Liberals face a serious problem. Their ability to achieve their goal of making our lives worse is limited by the fact that we can move. The Soviet Union dealt with this problem by devising a system of internal passports designed to keep people in place. But American liberals can't really do that, certainly not without amending the Constitution, to which I would add they have little regard for in the first place. So unlike residents of some totalitarian countries, Americans do retain the ability to vote with their feet, which might turn out to be the most important right of all. Uh, I think I just read that California is now charging people leaving the state an exit tax. No way. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I think it's Popeye. if you're... Verify if, that. Popeye. John Height, would you verify that for I, me, please? Uh, I looked this up a few weeks ago, and I think it's for... Uh, residents of a certain income level, um, um, something I would not have to worry about. So As the in, richer you are, if you leave California, the more money they want from you? Correct. That's, so that's what I remember. B is yeah. B. Well, yeah. Would that directly then apply to if you had a pretty significant business then, too? Is it, that what they're it targeting? Also, yep, it would target that, too. The California exit tax, tax on individuals and businesses who decide to move out of California. <laughs> yeah. uh, if your annual income exceeds $30 million, you could be subject to the tax for up to 10 years. After you leave, that is the insanity. State of California, yeah. <laughs> it is. Holy who really? So, who so woke up a, one day? Who so there's a, well, there's about ten movie stars that would get hit with that. Oh sure, yeah. no, yeah. moved, yeah. I'm moving away. Okay, thanks. Well, Ma and Pa with the two kids in the in the fifteen year old minivan, if they're they're not going to be subject to a tax, not yet, not yet, no. GLers, it's great to have Grunhoffers back, especially on the eve of Easter, because mm-hmm. if you haven't had a Grunhoffers double smoked ham for Easter, you're you're missing the bet. And there is a new Grunhoffers location, and that location is on Highway 96 in Birch Lake Square, where uh, Spencer's nephew, Jake, is running the store manager. So his his meat competence... Yeah, would be genetic. Yeah, right. <laughs> Friends of the family. It's on Highway ninety thirteen fifty Highway ninety six. Stop in, or call any of the three Grunhoffers locations to over- order your double smoked skinless bone in ham. There's that new location on Highway ninety six, the old Anchor Store just north of Hugo on Highway sixty one, and the store in Forest Lake, just east of ninety seven. I'm sorry, just east of 35E, off Highway 97. Uh, There's a great BOGO offer now, too, with the uh, brat specials. Mm -hmm. And if you're going there for the ham, load up. Let's go. Get the burgers, the steaks, the chops, the whole deal. 
but you want that ham for Easter. But Save yourself some time, too, because you're going to be looking after a uh, refrigerator, freezer of brats, yeah. brats and brats. Well, there's it's more take than 100 a flavors. It's, take a, it's not a five-minute in and out. Well, every week a new series of featured brats will be included, and this BOGO is a great way to try one of the many new flavors for free with the purchase of a regularly priced pack. It's Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meats. It's the best meat you've ever tasted, and those hams are the best hams you've ever laid eyes on. Mm -hmm. Easter is coming. Get a hold of Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meats. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text Next Step to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The latest audio addition to the Garage Logic Music Library. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. I've got a rare affliction. Turn that on! <laughs> Aren't you on vacation pretty soon? When when do you go? Uh, that's the uh, the song, Do Up the Banana Split. You can so, leave now. Uh, okay. Could you leave about, five yeah, minutes I, ago, please? Just have Rook switch seats with Chris. God and Chris oh, my God. Uh, I never want to hear that again. Wait a minute. The other day, what'd you tell me? What's the chorus? I'd like to hear songs we haven't heard a thousand bleeping times. Well, that um, that it, fits the bill. Well, <laughs> we had this discussion at my house, and uh, Dylan pointed out, he sent you about 70 songs, but we always hear the same 10. Yeah, so get, I'm just get your act together. That. You want to hear some new oldies. He's going on vacation. (laughs) How do I segue into this? If you need to clean up a mess. Yes. You call Joe. (laughs) An audio mess. No, absolutely not. When you need to make sure that your carpets are looking fantastic. Well, maybe not for Easter because... That's pretty close. I don't know how far out their schedule is booked, but Zero Res will make your home wonderfully clean. How do I know this? Because I've used them in the past. There's 17,000 raving customer reviews online, 4.9 Google rating. The hype is there with the wonderful, wonderful people at Zero Res. So not only are they going to clean out your carpet, they've got the Zero Res Gotta Love It guarantee. They're going to take care of you, and this month, Here's the deal. You're going to get three rooms, zero resified, from Minnesota's number one carpet cleaner starting at just $129. 75 bucks. Take that off your air duct cleaning and 20% off all upholstery. Call Zero Res. I'm going to give you the telephone number. But they zip in, they zip out, they're professional, and they've been with Garage Logic since the day one when they started advertising here. Zero Res, Z E R O R E Z, or online, uh, zeroresminnesota.com. Tell them you want the rookie special, 9520 Res, spelled forward or backward, it's spelled the same, Zero Res. We have an imam in Michigan who was calling for the slaughter of Jews. Ooh. Like oh, sheep. Can we'll you just do that slaughter beat? them like sheep. I don't think we can do that. Warren, Michigan. Nor do we want to. His name is. Uh, Abdu Zindani. Don't worry, don't worry, Jewish man, he said. One day we'll come and we will slaughter you like a sheep and the stone and the tree will work. I don't know what the hell that means. Hey, Muslim, come. There is somebody hiding here. Get up and kill him. 
He later made an emotional appeal to Allah, begging that Muslims be made his soldiers. Every way you want us to be, with the tank, with the eye, with the money, with the hand, make us soldiers for Islam. Make us die the way you want us to die. The uh, clip was streamed live on the mosque's YouTube channel. It has gone viral with many expressing outrage over the radical rhetoric. Really? They no. are here. Islamists are in the U.S. They are preaching Islamic supremacy, terrorism, and the destruction of our culture. Warned one user on Twitter, is the FBI doing this job? Do you care about uncontrolled illegal immigration? How long will people wait? Sort of says something that Democrats are tripping over themselves to capture these votes, doesn't it? This is the constituency that Biden is trying to placate with his Gaza policy. Uh, this The Michigan-based Zindani who spoke at the 2023 Interfaith Thanksgiving service by Detroit's Interfaith Leadership Council, is a preacher at the Islamic Center of Warren, Michigan, a nonprofit, of course, with all contributions tax deductible. The matter comes as Arab American voters in various states have expressed intent to punish Biden in elections due to his stance on Israel and the Gaza conflict. In Michigan where the president's loss would likely doom his re-election campaign, more than 100,000 Democrats chose uncommitted over Biden in the recent primary, indicating significant dissatisfaction with his own party. All right. Uh, Can you pause a second? Yeah. When you said he uh, called for their deaths on YouTube... It immediately struck me that that's against YouTube's hate Ooh, speech policy. Good point. And I was wondering why that hadn't been pulled yet. Reading here, good hate question. speech is not allowed on YouTube. We don't allow content that promotes violence or hatred against individuals or groups based on any of the following attributes, which indicate a protected group status under YouTube's policy. And then they go on and on. It says the clip, which was originally streamed live on the Moss YouTube channel, has gone viral in recent days. I'm getting this from Breitbart and other sources. The conventional news gatherers have not covered this, as far as I can find. Uh, no, right. it says it says originally streamed. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to assume that it has been taken down. Well, I'm going to quick. I'm going to assume it hasn't, and then I'm going to assume there's two set of rules on YouTube, uh, and uh, he 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 made the cut. I can tell you, Kenny, to answer your first question. For instance, when I post stuff to YouTube for Garage Logic, I have to designate certain things on it to make it acceptable for YouTube. Yeah, but I don't know anything about if that's different for doing something live streaming. That I don't know. There is, it's not on YouTube anymore, but there are cuts from him, and he may say the same thing. I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, because I watched the original one that you were just talking about, Joe, and that one is not up mm -hmm. on YouTube. I have many Jewish neighbors, and I, I think we're going to yes. have to be standing together. I already do. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I think you do. Well, Highland Park, where I grew up, St. I mean, Louis Park. It's going to come to more than just us saying that we stand together i mean it seems to me that it, we're headed towards violence yep. and we're going to have to get physical here and that means we're going to have to stand next to our jew friends and duke it out fight it out whatever that fight may be we're going to have to do it isn't it funny though how uh two religions that are were, were based you know catholic uh, christians and jews they're, they're very different but they have the same values. We don't honor a God that wants us to annihilate everybody that's, else. You know, we had some bad times. We had some bad times. What are you, that's Bishop really? Sheen? Yeah. But no, you're, that's really curious. The Protestants, the Catholics, the Jews, we're all getting along pretty well. Yes. It's just yes. the Muslims that want to kill everybody. Or the radical like... Muslims, I should right. say. You mean some people did some things, according to Ilhan. And yes. Then, and then chuckles about it. Remember, though, remember the uh, the Charlotte uh, thing, what, three yes. years ago? Yeah. Web? Where those those were not Muslims chanting, Jews will not replace us. Who, uh, refresh Charlotte. me. I don't, I don't remember yeah, this. I'm drawing remember a blank. The, 
Uh, remember the uh, the Trump quote about there's good people on both sides? Yeah. It came after the Charlotte thing. There was a group, a large group of, of fellas, uh, white, blonde, and Aryan-looking, shall we say, marching in Charlotte yeah. the night before oh, saying, no, the Jews that. will not replace us. Uh, words, uh, more words about Jews. I don't and know then why the they saying that. And then the next day we had the riots, remember, where the guy ran over the one protester and killed yeah. her? Yeah. Uh, and then we had the comments from then-President Trump saying uh, good people on both sides. But that's just it. The, the Jews don't want to replace us, and we don't want to replace the Jews. So those guys well, are off their, their January well, Sixers. They're, they're, yeah, they're... <laughs> they're it Nazis. Is. I mean, let's face it. They're Nazis. That's their view of the world. Is a Nazi. Well, what's disappointing is this has become America's problem where, you know, before we had a sense of security because all of this hate and warring and fighting was contained to the, the Middle East and whatnot. And now it's it's right here and it's in every state and every city. But the anti-Semitism we just talked about wasn't refined to the Middle East or, you know. I mean, that, it came from within yeah, our country. Correct. I, I, I still don't remember the story, but I'm going to go with what you said. Go, it was a huge news story. Huge. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was everywhere. Oh, I, thankfully, I've blocked it. Oh. I know I'm supposed to be watching college basketball like a good American, yeah, but I couldn't help but want? notice that In Heat of the Night was on last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the original movie. Yeah, which I great always, movie. Often, I've just loved it forever. And uh, but <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> it was nineteen sixty-seven, and uh, just a real brilliant work by Rod Steiger and Sidney. And uh, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, except uh, we've come a hey. long way since then. Okay. Yeah, come well, a long way since. So, then. what are you saying? You're saying that. That w that was very recent, or that was a, another point in time that we forgot. You know about. what, Matt? <laughs> I really don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Well, uh, no, it, it's worth thinking about because we thought we had come a long way, but it seems like we're in reverse here the last few years. Plenty of hatred. That's the only way I'm going to put we're it. And I know sometimes all of us disagree on that, but there's plenty of hatred out there still. Plenty of hatred yeah. to go around. Yeah, no, I don't. I, that you can't dispute that. I don't think yeah. anybody can dispute that. But wouldn't you agree that it seemed, or maybe it's just our white privilege lifestyles that we thought it was getting better. Maybe it wasn't. Well, well I, I think, took yeah, the I test. Certainly think. I took the Some, test. I have no white privilege. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> Joe's at zero. zero. <laughs> it does seem like we, we're in reverse, and it's just more of an issue. What now. would you say we peak, Ken? About o three, o four, somewhere in there. When I was at my drunkest. Is when we were, <laughs> as a country, we were the happiest. So sometime in the eight, 80s, you know, that 90s. That for me, too. Yeah. yeah. Pretty happy in the late 80s, yeah. the 90s. Well, yeah. uh, Emailer Tom who often weighs in on our dire mm. straits from St. Paul. Uh, Joe, recent podcasts have provided more opportunities for amateur links than a listener can reasonably be expected to piece together. <laughs> but on Thursday's podcast, you said you can foresee a day when America's lights no longer work, and it brought something to mind. I don't know if you've ever read Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand, but forgive a spoiler yeah. for those disinclined to slog through a thousand pages of dense prose. One yeah. of the book's protagonists knows America is done for, when the lights of New York City go dark. This brought to mind a recent interview I heard with Mike Rowe, famous for his television show Dirty Jobs. Rowe cited a staggering statistic. For every four electricians who retire this year, there are only two to take their place. Our country's infrastructure is crumbling, and we have fewer and fewer people capable of repairing it. And worse, euphorians minimize, if not vilify, those who get their hands dirty to keep the country functioning. On Thursday, Height read a story about a shooting at an Edina fitness center, which Reber's theorized was over a pickup basketball game. I was a bit dismayed when Kenny laughed off the story and chastised Reber's for being so serious about the incident. This is indicative of where we are in America, when even G. Ellers laugh off an attempted murder and say, well, that's just how it is these days. Just make sure your treadmill faces the door. 
Imagine a day in the not-so-distant future when the lights go dark in Minneapolis and all that's left are diversity coordinators, college professors, and murderous thugs emboldened by the timidity of feckless bureaucrats like Mary Moriarty. People close to me are weary of me of hearing me say the following, but it's a thought exercise that's well worth pondering. Just imagine when the emboldened thugs taking pot shots at each other in broad daylight are fighting over FEMA rations and not basketball games in a city gone dark in every sense of the term. Mm. Wow. Dark thoughts. I thought I was cynical. I was just going to say, Joe, I thought you were cynical. You know what, though? It's hard to argue with anything he said. Are we using his name? Tom, Tom, Bonner. Tom, my hat's he's, off to you. He's a uh, frequent, and, well, let me just frequent clarify. emailer, fre- long-time GLer. And a caller, Tom from St. Paul. Yeah. Um, let me clarify the one thing, though, Tom, about can he dismiss. That just happens with pretty much anything I say. So Everything. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't don't yeah. take that as, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. It's pretty much a daily occurrence. Uh, but don't worry. Well, I've got a place where you can go. Where, Joe? Well, wait a second, Joe. Yeah. He's dead on. He's He's correct. Uh, us of all people, you know, Thomas. Yes, Chris? I was looking for the right opportunity because I can tell you're about to transition to, yeah. to play a piece Whoa. of audio for you. To yeah. what? Talking about the dismay, the black helicopter, the dark circle that we're spiraling down. Sure. You guys are familiar with Governor Maura Healy, DFL Massachusetts. Okay. You're familiar with her? I am now. She is the one who offered the uh, the <laughs> residents of Massachusetts the opportunity to house migrants. They've got some issues. Right. Well, um, she was uh, interviewed by local ABC affiliate Boston 25. Is she harboring any? I don't believe so. Okay. They had a problem in Boston. Uh, an illegal alien or migrant, excuse me, uh, raped a disabled girl. In Boston. Not fair. And here is what she had to, uh, this was her response. This is the governor. Healy, if she can prevent this type of incident from happening again. You know, unfortunately, we have we have security and systems in place. We have vetting in place. Um, it is unfortunate that, that, you know, from time to time, things will happen. But Things will happen. Things will happen. A poor disabled woman was raped. 14-year-old girl. Things are not supposed to happen. What's well, how's that different than Omar saying some people did some things? That's exactly the same thought I had when I heard that quote. What's your phrase, Joe, about the center not holding? The some center old... is not holding around and round the widening gyre. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Yeah, we're circling into the abyss. Mm-hmm. What is wrong with that woman? What I sometimes find myself wondering that. What what? What is wrong? Did with you lose your 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 compassion? What happened? Yeah, where did you lose that? What did you hear at the kitchen table, growing up? What? what Were you wrong? always this way? What's yeah. wrong with you? What got you off track? I've given up wondering that about Mary Moriality. I've come up with my conclusion. She's either A or B, and and either one covers it, or all the above. Yeah, or both. Yeah, or I'm not sure. What the hell's wrong with you? I don't know. Well, it's 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 viewing the world through only one one lens. You're either an oppressor or you're oppressed. And there's no room in that in that outline. There's no room for goodness. Mm-hmm. Because if you're an oppressor, well obviously you shouldn't be. And if you're oppressed, we're going to make the world your oyster. There's no way to win. If that's your worldview, there's no rational slot to fit in. There's nowhere to be except chaos, which is what it, some people want. I'm no longer surrounded by Hennepin County liberals. It would really be so I, I can't walk out in the alley and down the down the alley and talk to my neighbors and find out why they support Mary. I really want to know why do you support her given the promises she made and the promises she's keeping? Why? What do you see in her? What result are you looking for? 
Yeah, I, I, I think you'd find, uh, particularly where you lived, you might have found quite a few of your alley dwellers who did not vote for her. Yeah, and had a lot of liberals on my block, and every single one of them hardworking, real jobs, Can real you, families. I do know. think, though, that some people are turning on her, because I know, we all know one diehard lefty who works in this building and is a South Minneapolis resident, and she says, I, I regret ever voting for this woman. And she's yeah. not alone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do yeah. I know this person? You do. For a million dollars. For a million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> well, I, I was teasing you. I was I was telling you that there is a place to go to calm down. Where's that, Joe? Climate cafes. Oh. Yeah, they're springing up all over the world. And this is where people can deal with their uh, anxieties, most principally their, their global warming. This is the New York Times is all over this. Hmm. Uh, they have a piece called, Can Climate Cafes Help Ease the Anxiety of Planetary Crisis? You know what you morons need to realize, you morons who buy this BS? There's a crisis, all right, but it has nothing to do with the climate. It has to do with human behavior. There's no climate crisis. That's just made up to bring about this destruction. One organization is called Climate Psychology Alliance North America. They told the New York Times they've trained 350 people to run climate cafes. Fun. In the U.S. and Canada with 300 people on the Climate Aware Therapist Directory. A climate barrister? No, the Climate Aware Therapist Directory. Okay. The alliance examines how mental health is affected by ecosystems, extreme weather and disasters, tainted air and water, and how that intersects with other forces like racism and income inequality. Psychologists say that such groups help people face the unsettling realities of the climate crisis. New York Times reporter Lola Fadulu and Emily Schmall wrote, and they, that's exactly where they belong is at the New York Times. Exactly where they belong at the New York Times. Uh, uh, let me see what else they said about the, uh, the groups include the simply named Climate Cafe in New York City that was founded in November of 2022. It's since grown into a wider activist organization involving protests and festivals. We get it. No one likes thinking about global warming. But we all share a concern about it. At Climate Cafe, we are here to make it simple for you to take action. Meet your neighbors, enjoy some coffee, and learn exactly how you can take part in the fight of our future. The, the, the fight for your future is the behavior of your neighbors, not, not the climate. Are we panicking today because of uh, the, the state tournament snowstorm? Well, we better be. Uh, is there a climate cafe in... Uh, the Twin Cities, where Minnesotans can go and put their head on the table in grief and uh, <laughs> put their head on their forearm in grief. And just sob. And just sob and <laughs> sigh heavily and wonder if it's the end of the world. Can we, do we have that <sighs> ability? Is that happening here? Because I, I'll go directly to one. When I leave today, I'm going directly to the climate cafe. Joe, when, when, when you walk in the door... You think you're going to be greeted by the smell of uh, roasting coffee beans no. and BLTs on the grill? What do you think you're going to smell? B.O. Yeah. <laughs> what do they serve at the Climate Cafe? Is it more of a food-based no, coping? You get, you get the coffee. But, you know, you got to have more than Maybe that. They might have a donut. Like a scone? Maybe. They yes. Have, you know. Yes. Scone. When you, help find your, when you help find your role in the largest movement in human history. This is the largest oh, movement wow. in human history. I didn't know that. That's something. And offer opportunities to make friends at our events. <laughs> By uniting as climate citizens, we will bring about the kind of transformation <laughs> that our economy and society needs to stop the climate crisis in its tracks. And remember, if you can convince just one euphorian resident of Liberal Lakes or Diversity of this truth, you will have done yeoman service. Remember, this has nothing to do with the climate. Nothing. This has nothing to do... With the snowfall today. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing what we now know about passing gas and the harm that causes. <laughs> if you pass gas in this joint, it's the equivalent to burning a tire, isn't it? You have let off a nuclear device. <laughs> you you will be 86 for life. <laughs> you know, the cafe, uh, what are they called? What did I call them? Climate, Climate cafes. cafes. Climate cafes. Well, they're also affiliated with uh, groups such as Extinction Rebellion, 
Planet over profit. I rest my case. Fridays for Future and the Sunrise Movement. Exhibition Rebellion has frequently appeared in headlines based on its extreme activism, blocking busy streets and interrupting events like a U.S. Open match. Mm. What, what have you accomplished, you morons? Dummies. Nothing. Nothing. I would like to open right across the street from every single climate cafe a uh, responsible opposing viewpoint cafe. I don't oh, know what that would be. That maybe would be awesome. um maybe a knack hardware and lounge with a pot belly stove where we can burn our scraps of paper and other tr- trash. I don't know. It's something worth uh There's another group. There's another group known as the Resilient Activists founded by 71-year-old Sammy Aaron, S A M I, after she said her son, a Berkeley student, committed suicide because of hopelessness over climate change. I'm very sorry about that, Sammy. But what I would do, I'm not a lawsuit guy, but what I would do is I would sue Berkeley for being a failed academy. I'm going to guess the son had some deeper issues than just worrying over climate change. That's just the My older son, Kevin, was one of those activists who was broken by the emotional burden he carried believing that his personal well-being was of little importance when weighed against the needs of the world. He died by suicide in 03. Yeah, that's way before this hysteria. He wrote, letting go of the passion to work on substantive structural change in favor of personal happiness is not a viable option. The resilient activist was founded to help activists like him recognize their critical value of self-care and to provide the community resources and insight to support long-term resilience in light of the critical work they do, Sammy Aaron wrote. So his upbringing had nothing to do with it? Nothing at all? Uh, Nothing what he was taught in the home? Nothing that she apparently is ready to address, maybe. Right. That would be a tough thing, way to lose a kid. I don't deny that. The worst. The worst. But uh, you're dealing with some mental illness there, Mom. Let's face it... uh, the world didn't kill him. The International Force of Nature Organization boasts over 190 climate cafes across 49 countries. Its website says now more than ever, we need spaces to host discussions about the climate crisis. There is no crisis. How it affects us and the actions we need to tackle it. Individual actions alone won't solve the climate crisis. You know what, though? It's a lot more fun for these young morons to hang out and complain about this stuff rather than work. <laughs> right. You know, it's right, just easier. Right. right. <laughs> and there's yeah. no accountability. Especially yeah. if you drive for Uber in Minneapolis, apparently. <laughs> That's right. They're among their peers. You're right. They're not going to run into any of those pesky citizens who have jobs. Well, and... This is fun. Why don't we take a break and return with our newsman? Okay. We haven't had many roofers join us on Garage Logic, but Pete is with us from Hire a Pro, and he wants to explain to you how they do what they do. Joe, last year we helped a lot of GLers keep what a roofing company would have otherwise taken in profits. We showed everyone behind the curtain, and the average homeowner kept about $5,600. Minnesota had a huge hail year in 23, and there's a lot of people who still have roofs to replace. Let's sit down and look over your claim together. We'll show you labor, material costs, how much profit is on the claim, and what you would keep for getting a permit and writing out a couple extra checks. Not a bad ROI for letting Hire a Pro manage the project for you. Oh, and lifetime manufacturer-backed warranties? Yeah, we got those two. So tell me, if the options were us or someone with no transparency who takes all the money, would you go anywhere else? Uh, probably not. So hit us up. Worst case is you don't like transparency and you'd rather pay full price. So if insurance has approved your roof replacement, give these guys a call at 651-402-3400 or visit them online at hireadotpro. That's hire, uh, and then put the dot there, Pro. I'm just hitting the bump. Yeah, there. Here we go. Just like Wait, you know, like, nudge, nudge. Yes. Can we sign them all? I forgot what you told me. Well, this uh, isn't new. Sea foam or <laughs> pro turf. <laughs> wow, Dylan has backup singers. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Sinjuri. I dumped a whole can, a whole can in the plow truck. Got to make sure that thing is at the top of its game because we're going to get about 14 feet of snow this weekend. Um, and that sea foam that, that I dumped into the gas tank, that's going to, 
That's going to cure all the usual engine issues that plague our cylinders. They're all eliminated with occasional doses. Give it a little bit now and then or do like I did and panic and dump a whole can in. doesn't matter. All those costly repairs that take money out of our wallets negated with those hits of sea foam. So easy to use. Crack it open, dump it in, done. Uh, that's all we ask for with our cylinders. Just run better and please last longer. I got to squeeze more miles out of you, baby. And that's what Seafoam gives us. It's the best way to save money from costly repairs and ensure that we can plow snow when we need to or arrive on time or whatever the hell you think you're up to. Seafoam will help you get there. And you'll find it everywhere. Just pull in any old spot and you'll find a can on the uh, automotive chemical aisle. A wonderful product in a world of bad gas and blizzards. Seafoam. A quick review of the staff uh, before we join John. Reeves, space management. What are you going to do? Um, well, I, I barely got any snow. Then you're fine. At my place. Really? John yeah. Height, space management. Uh, 7.15 this morning, I went out and space managed my really? driveway. Really? Okay, Kenny? 4.30 a.m., I was over at my mom's house plowing and um, it managed to plow half the gravel road into the ditch. Right? <laughs> it's too soft right. to be plowing, right. uh, but I'll be handling it. Yeah, Joe, absolutely. Left my home at about 5.30 in the morning and said, well, I hope she gets her done by the time I get home after me. <laughs> yes. uh, it noted, wasn't that much. I noted that my driveway was uh, melting it off pretty good. I will not do any space management on this round. However, on Sunday, we're being told we might get a whopper. Yeah, I You might even want to wait, yeah. uh, wait until Monday afternoon, yeah. Joe. That ought to be a fun commute. Here's John Height. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, this news is brought to you by North American Banking Company. A 19-year-old pleaded guilty yesterday to his role in a fatal shooting at the Mall of America, December 23, 2022. Tayshawn Adams Wright entered guilty pleas to second-degree murder and second-degree assault. Police said a fight had broken out at Nordstrom around 8 p.m. before someone pulled out a gun and started shooting. 19-year-old John Tay Hudson was killed in the shooting. Surveillance video showed Adams Wright and Code of Defendant LaVon Longstreet brandishing handguns before Hudson was chased and shot 11 times. Video shows the two standing over Hudson at different points as muzzle flashes show. A woman in the store at the time of the shooting grazed by a bullet but survived. Longstreet, who was 17 at the time of the murder, will be tried also as an adult. His trial expected to begin April 15th. He was arrested shortly after the shooting in Georgia. Adams Wright is scheduled to be sentenced on May 30th. Legal gun ownership and went through all the proper procedures to get that fire. Absolutely. Firearm. Okay. <laughs> A new recreational marijuana dispensary is set to open this summer, and it'll be the closest one yet to the Twin Cities. Prairie Island Indian Community announced plans for its dispensary, Island Peze, on Thursday. Island Peze, according to Prairie Island Tribal Council President Grant Johnson, is a step forward in the efforts to diversify their economy and strengthen the tribe's long-term financial sovereignty. He said, we're excited to be among the first to enter the cannabis market and create new opportunities for the future of the tribe. The community says the dispensary will open next to Dakota Station near Treasure Island in Welch. Plans are in the works to make Minneapolis State Capitol grounds feel safer and more inviting. Eric Cedarleaf Dahl is the Capital Area Architectural and Planning Board representative, and he says a lot of people who even live right nearby have never been to the Capitol grounds and don't feel welcome there or that they were allowed to be there. He says what? the board wants to change that narrative. The proposal outlines ideas to add gardens, a tree canopy, and more benches and picnic tables. Oh, God. Oh, just give me the number. Just ne never much. Just give me the number. What's the number? Well, okay, we'll skip. I got a few more quotes from him, but we'll skip. We don't need to tell you. The board has right now $5 million in funding to get the ball rolling. Oh, However, oh, that's just the, the kickoff. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's, appetizer. We're going to need that's, more, right? Exactly I'm, re I'm reminded correct. of something. Have you ever yeah. seen, it's not that long ago, for some reason, and I don't know who the people were, but cars were parked in the end zone of NFL games. Oh, yeah. The 70s? I, I, yeah. Was it the ref yeah. drove in or something? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but what made used, you think of that? This story from John. Oh. It used to be you could park right at the base of the steps of the Capitol and walk in. Yeah. Now that's all barred. Yeah. From, you can't get yeah. anywhere near it. 
and you got to walk a mile to get to the Capitol. And so yeah. you're one of those people that's for this program because you feel unwanted at the Capitol. No, just let me park there again. Okay. No, 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 yeah. no parking. All right. To uh, answer the rest of Kenny's question, it's all part of a bigger plan to make changes around the outside of the Capitol. And yes, the board says they will need more funding to make all of that happen. <laughs> How many of course they tables will. are they going to buy? Who what the hell parked in the end zone? What, what about uh, in front of the fancy new office building that we're, uh, do we have enough ferns there and shrubs and uh, mulch and whatnot? May we give a shout out to our friend, uh, Representative Marion Rarick, who we've had in studio with us. She uh, is a Republican House member, and she says in her letter dated to her constituents, construction is well underway for the new 730 million dollar state office building dubbed the palace for politicians uh she said we republicans on the rules committee on which i serve have been trying to bring a motion to stop the construction my colleague representative Kristen robbins republican maple grove has submitted this notion to be added to the agenda nearly every rules committee meeting since november so that we as a committee could discuss the motion and take a public vote on this $730 million spending. The motion, if passed, would stop construction and allow us to discuss whether this is the project, whether this is a project that should move forward. The chair has repeatedly refused to allow it to be added to the agenda. He refused to even have the conversation. The last meeting, he simply called the attempt to bring the motion out of order and gaveled the end of the meeting. I think that a palace for politicians costing $730 million merits a discussion, public testimony, and a public vote. Thank you, Marion Rarick. All right. Mm. Uh, tell me again, John, the people responsible for this landscaping project, because I've got some friendly advice for them. Who are they? I uh, they get a hold are of them. the, let's see, they have a long name. Uh, yep. Capital Atlanta. Area Architectural and Planning Board. Area Architectural Rock. and Planning. Did, did you find out for me who is the uh, who is the rules chairman committee for the DFL? It's a male, and he won't even allow his the opponents of this palace to have a conversation. Who is the rules chairman committee for the DFL? Uh, rules committee chairman. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't say it here. I'd like to know who that is. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, well, wait a second, Johnny. While it's fresh on your on our minds, I want to throw a monkey wrench at Chris. Chris, are you paying attention? I actually um, looked this up. It's Tom Cole. Sorry. Go Tom ahead, Kenny. Cole. Um, Tom you know, Cole. I just want to pause here and personally address the Capital Area Architectural Planning Board um, that if you're considering this improvement, this landscaping and this outdoor living space project this summer, I've got advice. I can help. Contact <laughs> professionalturf.com. <laughs> Perfect. They're going to work with yeah, you, that's the and way. they're going to take your $5 million and make it look like $15 million. They're going to give you digital photography and landscape imaging that you, you'll be able to see the finished project before a shovel even goes in, your, in the ground. You're going to upgrade that space in front of the Capitol, and we can do anything here. Stone patios, fire pits, driveways, walkways, retaining walls, ponds. You want a pond? I think a pond would be a good for you. pond would be good for you. Yeah, yeah we'll spring. put one in. Yeah. Uh, they've been doing this, Superior Lawn Care Landscape and Irrigation Service, since 82. So get on the computer, uh, Capital Area, um, what was it? Um, architect, area, Planning area. Board, blah, blah, blah. Right. Get Something. on the computer. It's professionalturf.com. Thank you very much, Kenny. Uh, Star Tribune reporting the death of a familiar name in the Twin Cities realty business, Ralph Burnett, who founded from scratch the powerhouse Minnesota real estate company that helped transform the way people buy and sell houses, died Tuesday in Minneapolis from Parkinson's disease. He was 78 years old. Burnett, born in Pittsburgh, but raised in the Twin Cities, didn't set out to be a real estate guy. In his 20s, he co-owned a ski shop at 50th and France, the trajectory of his life in real estate in the Twin Cities changed in 1968 when the owner of a real estate office across the street, who also happened to be his former Little League coach, hired him to sell houses. He caught the real estate bug in a big way. He wanted to build a business, and he wanted it to be number one. In 1973, he and Dar Reedy opened their own real estate office, which ballooned from a small group of seven agents 
to thousands, making it one of the largest and most storied brokerage uh, storied brokerages in the country. I never knew him. Uh, I read the obit. He sounds like an interesting guy. Yes. Did yeah, you know him, Rush? I did not know him. I just knew him. I met him one time at an event. Seriously, he's he was a really oh, tell nice us guy. about him. What, what what do you think? He likes <laughs> fish. No. In uh, national and international news, Russia and China today vetoing a U.S. resolution at the U.N. Security Council that called for an immediate and sustained ceasefire as part of a deal in Gaza, rejecting a measure that included some of Washington's strongest language since the start of the war. The Biden administration accelerating efforts then to halt the Gaza war as Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with Israeli leaders in Tel Aviv and the CIA director traveled to Qatar, where mediators were trying to narrow gaps between Israel and Hamas over a ceasefire deal. Shareholders voted this morning to take former President Donald Trump's media company public, a long-delayed move that will open the owner of Truth Social to stock market investors and grant Trump a stake worth billions of dollars. The vote today by investors in Digital World Acquisition authorized the Special Purpose Acquisition Company, or SPAC, to merge with Trump Media and Technology. Trump will own about 60% of the company, which at Digital World's current share price would be worth about $3.3 billion. Is that what? The so- Truth Social? Apparently, Is yeah. worth that I, much? I, 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 I don't I, understand. A lockup provision, though. I don't though, know about that. I don't know about that. I, yeah. A lockup provision in the merger agreement that will prevent Trump and other major shareholders from selling shares for six months unless they're granted a waiver. That could limit Trump's ability to use any of the windfall to help pay off his hundreds of millions of dollars in legal judgments. Trump does not have the cash to secure a bond that would delay enforcement of the $464 million judgment in a New York fraud case, his lawyer said. If he doesn't post bond by Monday, the New York attorney general could move to seize his bank accounts, real estate, and other assets. You know, this Letitia James falls under the category of be careful what you wish for. Mm. Uh, Today it's Trump. Uh, Tomorrow, which real estate broker in New York is going to be plundered? Uh, there's something amiss there. I, I don't know enough about it to be smart, but I don't like what I read. A group of over 100 migrants attempted to enter the U.S. illegally yesterday by rushing a border wall, Thank breaking you through. All for that. Thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, that's a the really serpent, strong branch you're standing on. The serpent on that is not yeah. holding the handle. That's I, a, I, I, I think I've said enough arms. for today. I'm done talking for today. Yeah, I'm <laughs> in his limit. I, I just, I, I'm sick of hearing whatever I have to say about stuff. I'm just sick of me. Why don't we have a contest to raise money <laughs> for charity? With the uh, with the end game, you cutting that dreadful roadkill that's hanging from your chin, <laughs> Joe. It's just the worst damn I, thing I've ever seen in my life. I can't face myself in a mirror, <laughs> and the beard helps me get through that process. All right, I, it's I. You know where you need to be a climate cafe. Uh, wow. I, 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 need right I need a hospital. I need a hospital. You fit right in I with need. that raccoon hanging from your face. And you know, guys like you really, really make me feel a lot. I better. didn't mean to feel well, you. I, did, I, 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 I didn't mean to make you feel bad, Kenny. I, I would like to have one therapist just for this five, five group of people right here. Group of five people. I, I, I don't want in their keep. I'll tell I don't you that want much. no therapist. Let me. I know. I, I saw a little it, uh, Chris movement there that John, indicates. John, like, the, the guy that doesn't think he needs therapy is probably the guy yep. who needs it the most. I, I would agree completely, I don't, I don't actually. I, don't I, don't agree. Agree. I, I mean, I admit I'm teetering on the edge of sanity. It's it's no, it's no, you know. Yeah, you, you would not argue with us, but Joe will argue with us about yeah, it. Yeah, so. Joe really thinks he's a normal guy. <laughs> I'm normal. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have any white know, privilege. Uh, no. I have no uh, quirks. Yeah, yeah. zero. Um, uh, let me get one more story, and I know Chris wants to take a break, but uh, I, love the, I, I, I love this story. Uh, it was in the Star Tribune today, so I looked it up uh, and got some more info on it. And there's actually actually a documentary about it, too, which I'd like to see. Uh, it's about this group. Uh, have you heard about the Ghost Army? I think we've talked about it briefly before. The, what? the Ghost Army in World War II? I'm no. unaware of it. it. It was a group of American soldiers. Let me tell you, uh, Bernie Bluestein was one of them. Uh, He was a sophomore at Cleveland School of Arts in 1943 when he left to join the U.S. Army. He then trained in a secret unit that landed at Normandy shortly after D-Day in June of 
1944. Uh, He said, what we did is we attracted the Germans' attention so that real units could do whatever they had to do elsewhere. As a private first class serving the 603rd Camouflage Engineer Battalion, he created fake shoulder patches that his fellow soldiers wore on their uniforms to impersonate different elements of an infantry division. Now, the really cool part, they made uh, fake trucks, fake army tanks. They were blow-up army tanks. Sweet. False so really. Like hardware, like yeah. paying no well, attention to that bush that's moving exactly. across the floor. Yeah. John, weren't they also in England before the invasion? Um, because that they wanted be the Germans to know. think that they were going to invade in another area. So they set up a whole fake base full of inflatable tanks and cardboard airplanes and the like. Yeah. In his final mission, Blue Stein said uh, the ruses devised by the roughly 360 soldiers of his battalion forced German commanders to spread their defenses thin in eastern France. Yeah. And that, he said, allowed the U.S. Army's 90th Division to cross the Rhine River with less resistance. The estimation is they may have saved up to 30,000 soldiers lives. Wow. They were known as the Ghost Army. There were 1,100 of them. Inflated rubber tanks created fake airfields, blasted the sounds of troops marching on speakers to make it seem like uh, somebody was marching toward German soldiers. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Uh, on Thursday, <laughs> yesterday, Blue Stein and two other members of the Ghost Army, Seymour Nussbaum, aged 100, and John Christman, aged 99, received the Congressional Gold Medal on Capitol Hill before a crowd of more than 600 that included family members and friends. Uh, I did look this up. There's a documentary from 2013 called The Ghost Army Book. Uh, the Ghost Army, I'm sorry, which I'm definitely going to seek out. And there's a, a book also called The Ghost Army of World War II, uh, written by the same fellow who did the documentary, because it sounds horribly interesting. There's Fantastic. so many great stories oh. surrounding World War II. One of my favorites, I don't know if it was the OSS or the Ghost Army, but they took a, a dead, a cadaver, a dead body, planted it with a whole bunch of fake invasion papers, floated that, it landed on the shore, the Germans pick it up, and they read this stuff, and it's, they think it's a gold mine, a treasure trove of information, and they were totally fooled. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think we're done, right, Chris? You want a break That's here? Cool. And we'll send it to uh, Mr. Rookie. Well, you can certainly do that. And you can certainly, I've got some great, great news for all you GLers out there. And it has to do with Minnesota Masonic uh, Charities. Minnesota has 120 Masonic Lodges throughout the state. And most people look at those old buildings as the place people go once in a while for a good pancake breakfast or where their grandpa went to hang out with friends, learn the secret handshakes. I know they're probably right about that, but what people may not know is that Masonic Lodges is where thousands of men make a commitment to develop their personal potential and work on becoming the best possible version of themselves. Courteous, honorable, kind, humble, charitable, you know all those words, in a word, civil. In a world dominated by the decline of ethical and moral integrity, the Masons, they've got a serious project going right now, have embarked on a new program, Civility School. The test run of this program will be held on March 30th from 10 to noon at the Masonic Heritage Center in Bloomington. Get your elbows off the table. Yes, that kind of stuff. So if you'd like to attend and lend your garage logician's eye to the program, go to garagelogic.com backslash Masonic. There's a little form you need to fill out because they want to know who's coming, but they would love to hear garage logicians getting together like-minded guys and just say, hey, let's figure some of this stuff out. Garagelogic.com backslash Masonic. Fill out the form and we'll see you at 10 o'clock on the 30th in Bloomington. Yes. Hey, how's that pregame? Red paint. <laughs> Let me write it down. Hang on, can't, can't get over here. Well, Patty, uh, my old Cretan Durham Halls didn't have it last night. Oh, no. man, they were overmatched, weren't they? They yeah. got blowed out. I, I, uh, I thought it'd be a little closer than that, but uh, no, it wasn't. Egan didn't have it over... Uh, Minnetonka either. You got now. You got Minnetonka yeah. and Wyzetta in the final. Who in the hell do yeah, you root for? I don't know, but uh, Minnetonka. I mean, uh, uh, 
Egan upset Park Center in the first round. That shocked me. I saw Park Center play earlier this year. They were good. I guess they had a couple of guys foul trouble or hurt or some dang thing. But I, I thought for sure they'd be in the finals. But Minnetonka and Wyzetta are right next to each other. Yep. Uh, I wonder how they get in different regions. I don't know. They're located right next to each other, but somehow they uh, end up with those uh, high class four A's. You never know what regions they're going to have them in, but uh, I don't know. They'll, uh, they should have a pretty good crowd there, I would think, tomorrow night before oh, yeah. the snow comes. Yeah. The snow's not going to fall till when? Sunday, right? Apparently. So, uh, we'll be, uh, the we'll March okay. Madness delivered a beauty last night with Oakland beating Kentucky. Oh, yeah. I saw Kentucky early this year in one game when they scored like a 100 and some, and I thought, man, they're good, but they don't guard anybody. All year long, they were giving up incredible numbers of points. They didn't look that interested when I watched, and that, you know, also didn't look interested was Kansas. I don't I think these NIL teams are like saying, I'm not getting paid enough money to do this. Yeah. You know, I don't know. but uh, You know, according to yeah. ESPN, there are still, uh, well, as of last night, even after the Butler victory, I'm sorry, the Oakland victory, there were still 300,000 perfect brackets in the country. Really? Yeah. Who, wow. are, the, who are the 300,000 people who picked Oakland? What a sick, my right, right. <laughs> AI. Well, but a lot of people fill out 12 brackets with all upsets in them and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you saw that one coming. There was a couple. The one that everybody was picking was McNeese State. They said, oh, look out for McNeese because that's that. The uh, crook who used to be the LSU coach who got fired, Will Wade, is uh, got fired for improprieties, yeah. uh, is now in McNeese State, and they were supposed to be good. And they were down like 25 in about 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, a lot of people take those flyers, and not that, but there weren't that many upsets yesterday. They were mostly by form. Yeah. I was rooting for Drake. I was rooting for Drake, and they – Kicked it away at the end of that game. I watched. Who they? Who that. beat them? Oh God, Menorah. Who? Uh, I saw that Washington too. State of all people. I think One I picked most... Washington State. Yeah, well, right? good pick, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I I solved that problem. I don't even bother to pick one out. No, I got to get your thoughts on the o- How much of the Otani thing have you read about? Enough to be terribly confused and suspicious. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you and I are on the same wavelength of this. Uh, you know, the old journalism professor who said, uh, uh, remember, whenever you're interviewing, make make yourself have one thought. Why is this SOB lying to That's me? Right. <laughs> and this is – I. so we're supposed to believe – now, the, originally, the guy said that he gave him the four, four and a half mil and said, now, don't gamble anymore. You know, we're mm-hmm. good friends here, and I, I'm pretty wealthy, and I'm going to be even wealthier. But uh, don't don't gamble anymore. And then his lawyers and his consultants, so Shohei, said, that don't sound good that you're paying off four and a half a million to an illegal bookmaker. So the next day, it's he didn't know a thing about it. It was all on me, and uh, never you know, seen him before in my life. <laughs> never, never, never seen the bookie. Never. But who, you know, who? What bookie is going to let you run up millions and dollars in debts just because you say you know Shohei of time? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Want to get paid? What? Once it gets up to about a mil, the guy's going to say, "Ah, you know, I, I think I'd like to get some money here." You Either know? that, or you're going to get visited by a couple of goons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when I used right. to gamble early in college, the number was about four hundred dollars, and that phone is still ringing. I've always told the story about the uh, the uh, the fella that I knew who owned the limo company here that was uh, was you could make a bet with and. I had some friends call me, and, uh, you know, some of them worked at the St. Paul paper at a time, in fact. And uh, they said, uh, they called me up and said they were beating up the bookie they had so bad he wouldn't take their bets anymore. And could uh, I possibly find them somebody? So I called the guy. He's now down in Arizona, and he says, oh, give him my number. I love those guys. So about, <laughs> about three months later, I talked to him, and he says, 
Yeah, they sued for peace when they owed me twelve thousand. I don't think they have that much patience to sit there and uh, let a guy get millions in debt. But uh, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, I heard Manfred on the game like Wednesday. I was watching the game early in the morning, and he didn't sound good. He didn't sound happy. <laughs> and then about no. <laughs> twelve hours later, this story breaks. So uh, uh, he knew what was coming. It's, it's not a good thing for baseball. Did I see a video of a second baseman yes. uh, charged yes. for blocking Ugh. the bag? <laughs> When he was clearly I, not blocking the bag? He just tagged the guy. He put his glove down and tagged him. Lindor. Yeah, put Lindor. His on it. So now, I got to tell you this. And <laughs> in Florida, in the middle of February, Rocco goes to this meeting they have where they, you know, they got the managers and all those guys, and they're telling them about the new rule. Mm-hmm. And Rock, that if you, if you drop a knee down and stop a guy, right? Yeah. Uh, like that, they're going to... It's going to be interference, and the guy's going to be safe because they think it injures people. Well, this was just a tag, but I told Rocco, I said, he says, I think it's going to have to be really grievous before they call it. And I said, Rocco, <laughs> you can't trust these jackass umpires. Once they get a chance to be the first guy to call that, yep. they're going to make some stupid-ass call, and there's, it's going to be a contest to see who can throw one of you guys out of the game the quickest. That's going to turn people away from the game. You think? Oh, it's yeah. just terrible. horrible. It's terrible. I, I would hope that this guy's a, like a substitute umpire, although the substitute umpires work so much because they get so much vacation now. The guy umpires half the season. A guy named Barber, Sam Barber or something like that. I was looking him up. He's not in the big leagues full time, but he loves throwing guys out. But it was just absolutely asinine. Right. And here's the other thing: it's not reviewable. It's one of the things that's not reviewable, so they they can't uh, review it. I, I would like to I would like to see what Rocco says about that one when I. Uh, I can't <laughs> well, but here's the problem: that. by the standards of the umpire making that call, you cannot ever gain second base. No, no, you can't, no, you can't do not, it. You cannot ever get him out. Right. So what you're saying then, Joe, is Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to have 260 stolen bases this year. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, It's it's unbelievable. And it was the spring game. If it had been the regular season, the manager would still be out there screaming at the umpire. Right. What what you're telling me will do no good because there's no review. No, there's no review, but it's – it's not even close to what they say it's supposed to be, but this guy was obviously just waiting to call it. You know who would love this new rule, don't you? Hmm. I guess mom do knows best. That's right. Ricky yeah. would Ricky, love that yeah, new rule. Yeah. Ricky would love that new rule. <laughs> yeah, what are you supposed to do? Say, just come on down. I saw that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. That every and the NFL's got a new one going too, Joe. Now they you can't hit them high and you can't hit them low, right? Right. You, you tackle a guy too low, it's a penalty. You tackle a guy too high. Now, if you tackle him and use your hip when you take them to the ground, that's going to be a penalty. The hip something, hip drop, thing. hip drop tackle. I don't even know what the hell they're talking about, <laughs> but they say that. Uh, they say that they might not call it during a game, but if they see it on Monday, then they're going to find the guys. <laughs> oh, what the it. hell? I don't know. I don't it's know either. It's a violent game. Yeah, it's a it's terrible game. I said this morning, if you play football for a living, you know, you're going to, you know, you're a competitive, hard guy. And at 58, you're not going to be able to walk. That's just the way it is. Or that's think. But that's, <laughs> or you know, think. Right. <laughs> you know, you're going to be walking around with two new knees and a new back, and uh, you're probably going to die at 62. But that's, that's right. That's life of football. That's so, the trade-off. That? Those things yeah, happen. That's trade-off. That's yeah. right. Some things make, happen. Some things happen. Most of you most of you piss away your money before you're that old anyway, so yeah. don't worry about it. Okay, which game is worth watching tonight? Oh man, I haven't even. Uh, oh, you don't know? You haven't looked? I haven't even, I haven't even looked. Which uh, I just kind of, you know, you turn on TV now and they're on like four stations, and you can 
The nice thing about uh, streaming is you can they give you a nice list up on top of everything, and you can just go boom, 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 and bring them all. Yeah, in but clicking you can only two way click. We need four way clicking. Ooh, four way. You can only two way well, click. Yeah, they got the they got the thing that they got four games going at once. If you want to click on that, but my eyes aren't good enough to see what the hell's going on. No, that would confuse me. me. That would confuse me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why don't I talk so to you good. Monday? All righty, uh, we'll do that. Goodbye. See ya. Yep. See you later. Bye. See you later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> are you ready for one? Yeah. The okay. looser the waistband. <laughs> are we done? Are we done? No. Can we go? No. Let's go home. <laughs> Can we go? See, there are two locations, of course, for EcoFun. I've been remiss in not well, yeah. reminding you of the Burnsville yeah. location. Just drove by it the other day. Right on the service road of life near County Road 42, and of course the uh, Forest, Lokely, Forest Lake location, just west of 97 off 35E. Say, we have a high school student in Indiana. Uh, his name is Cameron Blasick. And he got a free paint job of his pickup truck. They uh, wrapped it in the American flag for him for free. Cool. Why'd they do that, Joe? Well, because where he goes, East Central High School, the administrators there in St. Leon, Indiana, they they stopped him from displaying the American flag earlier this month. He had it on his truck. Mm -hmm. Oh. He's 17 years old, and he displayed the flag on his truck for most of his senior year. But Blasek said school administrators told him it broke school rules and Mm. needed to be removed. So he was written up for insubordination. (laughs) Are you kidding? What is he, he, in the Army? Yeah. And he said to the school, there's no rules against this. I'm taking my uh, action right from the rule book. There's no... There's nothing that prevents me from doing this. And so other students caught on, and they started flying the American flags on their cars, and the story went viral. Viral. Mm. And Cameron said, I guess other students had heard about that, and they showed up the next day with flags on the back of their vehicles. And then GCI Digital, a business based out of nearby Cincinnati, heard about Cameron's patriotic story and decided to spring into action. They gifted a brand-new custom American flag wrap to the high school senior, free of charge. And I'm looking at a picture of it. It's cool. They wrapped it. They don't paint it. They wrap it in the flag. Got it? Yep. Got and it. Uh, Fox News Digital said we saw Cameron's story, and it resonated with us in a lot of ways. The truck was his grandfather's, and Cameron is a true American, interested in serving in the military. Now he's a fan of his new red, white, and blue truck. I love it. It's only been one day at school so far, but I think it's great. I love driving around with the big flag all over the vehicle. Uh, why in God's name would the school not allow a fun? It's your, it's our flag. 
Right. Why it's triggering? Fail. It's triggering. Oh, Why are so many baloney. people afraid of the flag? Why have they changed what that represents? Mm -hmm. That's a flag for everybody. It they will. went to the bad excuse though and said every flag, harumph, harumph. Uh, we uh, that we can't have any flags on your truck. The great part about that story is when the administration told that kid he can't do it, all the kids showed up with flags right. in their vehicle. Well, listen, yeah. this BS. The principal, right. Right. Tom Black, said. Well, this is a potential safety issue with visibility. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And five, uh, five, 500 to 600 teenage drivers leaving at the same time during dismissal, <laughs> as well as concerns Jeez. that the flags are not appropriate for school. Concerns that flags that are not appropriate for school will be displayed, so they throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. Yep. Do you After think that buzzkill has ever been with a woman? No. Seriously. <laughs> After consultation with the super, however, Black, Principal Black, determined the school could allow the U.S. flag while still restricting other flags. We regret wow. and are sorry for the confusion and are working diligently to clarify the issue with our community, Black said. You ding dong. You're a ding dong. Ding -dong. <laughs> Just go with ding dong. ding dong. You're a ding dong. <laughs> ding ding like ding dong. Isn't that something? We can't have the American flag. It's a safety issue. What a it, shame. If you're on the left and you think the Amer the right has appropriated the American flag, it's your job to take it back. It's everybody's flag. We're all here. Let's hold hands and pray. Kumbaya, yeah. my lord. My lord. Kumbaya. Is that the only lyrics to the song? Oh, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone sleeping, Lord, oh, yeah. Kumbaya. Oh, right. oh, we have to do it in the round. Let's do it in the round. <laughs> okay, you start, Kenny. <laughs> Thank you, GLR. Damn, I was going to do it. I'm just kidding, he says. Okay, I'm just doing Chris, something here. Chris is the one day Reavers is in a hurry. Don't we have to yeah. do uh, this yeah. day? And, uh, well, no, but they're old. well, this day is brought to you. No, really what's brought to you is only because. I got only because. You. Reavers checked out about uh, 12 minutes after. It is brought noon. to you by Renewal by Anderson for the best windows possible. Not only windows, but uh, patio doors and entry doors. Renewal by Anderson's a J.D. Power Award winner. The highest customer satisfaction among window and patio door manufacturers for four years in a row. They have the most five-star reviews in the greater Twin Cities among leading full-service window replacement companies. Go on their website. You can see all of the trustworthy cooperation. These new Acclaim windows are engineered and manufactured right here by Renewal by Anderson. They are the best, and they can prove it. Anderson's engineering and innovation is present in every component. I know this. I've seen and used Anderson windows my whole life. I know people with Anderson windows. It's, uh, and the Acclaim windows have renowned beauty, durability, and performance. You, you feeling the draft today with Let's that big snowfall? Let's go. You wouldn't be feeling that with Renewal by Anderson. Learn more at uh, Anderson.com. Uh, learn more at Renewal by Anderson.com backslash Garage Logic or call Renewal by Anderson 651 705 69. Three one, and only because they come to us all the way from Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, the temporary home of the traveling linemen. Mm. It was on this day, March twenty second, in eighteen eighty two, a guilty verdict was rendered in the impeachment trial of Judge UV, Eugene St. Julian Cox, who had been accused of conducting a trial Ooh. while drunk. His cause probably was not helped when 10 bartenders testified to his ability to hold liquor. Cox was removed from office, but his allies in the Democratic Party later helped him reverse the conviction. For, for, uh, what? For the, ah, what? Give me another one. Bar the election. The conviction. Election. The conviction. Oh, conviction. conviction. Uh, so the DFL was dirty back then, too. Yeah. They were the other way around. Come on. On this day. March 22nd. In 1908. <laughs> like like the right side can't yeah. pull a cork and bend an elbow. Give me a break. <laughs> Maurice H. Stans was born in Chicago. 
And where? Hello? Chicago. My what? <laughs> He's still talking about the uh, Judge Cox. <laughs> Just a minute. Take that oh, tooth yeah, out. Push that sucker in there. Uh, Marie Stans was born in Shakopee. He's, he was Secretary of Commerce under Nixon in 69 to 72, and I believe he had a role in Watergate. So, he did. Mm-hmm. He, he gave somebody money, right? That's I think, right. If I recall correctly. On this day. 322. In 1958, movie producer Mike Todd, won an, uh, who won an Oscar for Around the World in 80 Days for Best Picture of 1956, died in an airplane crash in New Mexico. Todd was born in Minneapolis in 1909 as Avram Hirsch Goldbogen. Was, just, uh, was he, no, wasn't he married to Elizabeth Taylor at the time? When I don't he know. It doesn't say that crash? on this day in history. He might have been, yeah. This I day just in history re-watched covers that. everything, and it's not on there. On this day. It's a long one today. Week. That's right. 1993. <laughs> George O. Berry died in Minneapolis, born in St. Paul, the son of a railroad porter and a domestic worker and a federal meat and poultry inspector by profession. Berry was one of the first African-Americans elected to public office in the city, winning a spot on the St. Paul School Board from 1966 to 1973. During his tenure, he worked for the creation of magnet schools. And I believe Royce claims he does not know him. Probably not. I do not know this man. But Barry. Barry. On this day, in 2002, Governor Ventura signed a law designating the image known as Grace as the official state photograph. Nice. The photograph was taken by Swedish-American photographer Eric Enstrom in 1918. It depicts an elderly man bowing his head and giving franks. Sure. Thanks. No. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Okay. Do you know the, you know the story uh, behind that? He was bowed over a loaf of bread. Oh, he? He, you know the real story? No, I don't, Kenny. It was an alcoholic drunk that was passed out on the curb, and he brought him into his... I'm, I'm not kidding. He brought him into his studio and shot him. Really? Is that yeah. when he gave him Franks? Yeah. Also, yeah. When, yeah. The, when the word Barry is mentioned, do you guys get the same frightening image in your head that I do? Yes. yes. Yeah, I don't. Uh, 100%. <laughs> Michael Todd was indeed married to Elizabeth Taylor when he died in the plane crash. And in fact, of her seven husbands, yeah, he, he's the only one she never divorced because really? he got killed in the plane well, crash. Well, she never got around to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. He was uh, Avram Hirsch Goldbogen. There you go. He probably knew Sid. I'm not kidding. I'm standing on the corner in Winslow. Well, they've been at work at the same time. No, no, Sid would have been born. Ah, they're going to gonna be okay. They probably were raised in the same neighborhood. Sign up for YouTube. Peace out. You got it? Yeah. <laughs>